House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 3 is here. It's time to talk about it in full spoiler talk. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And specifically, let me know what your guys' thoughts are so far on this season. I think overall it's kind of had a slow upbringing. But I think each episode gets a little bit better in terms of what it needs to do. And it always ends in a way that makes me go, I need to see next week's episode right now. And talking about Episode 3, I'm very excited to be here talking about this episode because... What I really thought and loved about this episode is it really dissects a little bit more about the political game within House of the Dragon. And one of the things that really this all stemmed from was one lie of a father telling one daughter something and his wife and everyone kind of taking that and lying about it of what he actually wanted. And for me personally, from that lie and from this pettiness between two friends... It is now escalated into something else that I didn't expect it to really go into that avenue. And from this episode, what we see is that these women are surrounded by men who both just want war in the end of the day, where these women themselves are very much would rather avoid that. And what I love in this episode and primarily where it all builds up to is that final conversation where we finally see Queen Rhaenyra go and meet. Queen Allison, And I love the usage of the white worm in here and specifically what she's used as is kind of like the whisperer per se of uh, Sir Likes Foots a lot. Like I like that every single one of the teams, Team Green and Team Black, kind of have their own fitting and own people that parallel to someone on the opposite side. And for me, looking at this and specifically seeing what the white worm is used as and how she saved her life and now she's kind of like... A connoisseur and someone who's important to Renera. Renera is able to double back and use that to go and meet Queen Alicent and for them to have a conversation. And first off, the intensity leading up to that final conversation all throughout the streets, it always made me worried that Renera was going to get caught. But the second she gets there and has that conversation with her, by the time it ends, you know, Allison's still lying through her teeth. I mean, I mean, in my opinion, maybe I'm rem remembering wrong, but it still feels like she's lying through her teeth. But what she doesn't lie about is this is out of my control now. You know how Aemond is. You know how Aegon is. Chris, Christian asshole Cole, who I wish would have been burned by that damn dragon this episode. We know how he is. And we know he's already marched out. And whereas Rhaenyra has kind of stayed back, they haven't heard from Damon, but we do get some cool, interesting things with Damon that we'll talk about in a second. That entire thing really leads out that there is no control no matter what we want to do. What we have set out to be, what we have set out to do, this was that moment. And now all these people we've riled up to help us with this are doing their own shit in terms of what we originally wanted. And now I'm curious to see how Renera feels. Does she actually feel betrayed by her father? Because reality is, there is no truth. Well, there is a truth to it all, but it's not like you can rewind time or anything like that. Like, Renera just has to trust off someone's words. And I'm curious to see if she believes that going forward. Primarily because Queen Alicent talks about the, the song that only her father and her had ever discussed. And I think those elements, again, all build up to such a fruition and a very interesting fruition to see where it all ends up going in the end of the day. So very much like that, liked all the conversations, and I like where these characters are going and primarily seeing where they are in their lives. Jumping over to a couple others, I think one of the more other interesting aspects of this episode was Damon finally getting to see where he went. He went to another place, claimed it in Renera's honor. But I think the more interesting aspect comes from his internal turmoil turmoil i think i said that right now and that turmoil of what he's feeling in some way shape and forms kind of breaks him and shout out really great to see millie alcock show up in here and that little sliver of her stitching the head back onto the body i thought that was such a great usage of a nightmare but we never really looked to see that Damon would be the type to have turmoil like this and these nightmares visions. And I think that's actually like one of the best parts is primarily him going to such a dark, despairing place. It really is just touching, to say the least. And like primarily when he gets there, he's like ready to fight. And they're not, no, we'll bow to you. We'll, we'll bow to Brenner, all that. So again, interesting to see what Prince Damon was doing here. And I think, again, it adds character development to him. 
jumping over to Christian Cole, almost died by that damn dragon. I Every time I see this motherfucker's face, I just want to beat the shit out of him. I don't know if it's just like you guys too, but I, I think he might be one of the most hated characters in Game of Thrones ever. The actor though, Fabian Farkle, or Fankel, awesome. He's always great. I, I think he's great in the role, but um, very interested to see if next week is the big action one because it's now they've finally built this up. But like the final thought that I really had watching this episode, because it's, it's, it's quite beautiful. I almost lost my train of thought. Cause then there was something else I just remembered, which that's how house of dragons feels. It's like, there's always something, but the major takeaway I had from this, and it goes from the first beginning of this episode to even the conversation before, I think Aemon is the or Aegon is the one to walk in to like the whorehouse and the bar and everything like that. And we see that one guy talking about how, oh, I'm the half brother, you know, I'm the bastard. And, you know, is he to be believed? Is he not? But the more interesting aspect is seeing how the townspeople and how people actually in the kingdom are reacting to the two different sides. And from the opening of this episode, which I have to say, House of the Dragons has done a very fascinating job bringing together the seven kingdoms and everything into this world from the opening of their episodes and these cold openings that they have like primarily the the first episode whether whether it's the starks on the tower i thought that was an absolute grand way to open the episode and specifically the season but this is another one of those where two young people are arguing my dad you know went to renera my dad went to aegon and they end up fighting and a war breaks out and that's what we're seeing is that sides are divided which I think also parallels to our world as well with the political aspect in the United States and everything like that with how people are. And again, fascinating to see how it just basically has never changed no matter what time frame or world that we are in. And, you know, seeing Aegon go into that bar and everything like that and then basically ridicule Aemon. It, it's, it's heartbreaking and Aemon is a sociopath that I'm just like, I would not want to fuck with that guy. So... Overall, I think House of the Dragons Season 2, Episode 3 is a solid, great episode. It's one that I think dives in a little bit deeper into the fruition of the kingdom and starts to show even more of what everyone is kind of feeling, but as well as touches on two characters who now, where maybe their visions are kind of aligning and maybe a conversation like this should have happened fucking years ago, it's now just too late. And it's broken so many different things that now a war is afoot no matter what. And I think this, hopefully, again, I could be wrong because House of the Dragons and Game of Thrones has never always been about the action. It's always about the characters and the political aspects of it in a chess game. But hopefully next week is the episode that goes boom and starts the fire uh, where a giant fire breaks out and a fight and a battle and all these things. Because it feels like the chess pieces are finally aligned to have something of sorts of that. If not, it could be more build up. And I think that's okay. I think season two of Game of Thrones, if we remember, was a lot of buildup per se. Um, and I think House of Dragons season two might be going in that same direction, but for good usage. I'm liking the characters. I'm liking the season. Not as much as the first season, but I still think it's a damn good show and it makes me excited to watch it every single week. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like, subscribe button. And of course, until next time, stay classy.